So, of course, the new league season, a few weeks away now. Has it sunk in yet that you're going to be a Premier League player? Yeah, um, I think during the summer it didn't sunk in, but when when I came back after the break uh, and I saw all the signs in the club and all the preparation and all the meetings about it and everything, that's when you, I think when that's when everybody realised we, we we did it and then that's when I realised I was going to play in the Premier League this season. You've come a long way since you first arrived on English soil, so have you enjoyed that ride? Uh, yeah, since obviously I was 16 when, when I came to England and obviously I had a, a long journey, but yeah, enjoying every moment, enjoying every minute that I'm, I'm on the pitch, every training session. So yeah, I'm very happy with uh, with the journey so far. I'm guessing when you, well, of course you joined Southport on loan from Blackburn, but I'm guessing when they did like the signing announcement for Southport, I'm sure it weren't anything like what you've been through this summer with the Premier League photos and all the cameras and TV stuff. <laughs> no, no, it's obviously was um, that happened years ago. It was that 2014 to going to 2015, I think it was something like that. Uh, but no, it was uh, you know that that moment for me was very very special as a 18, 20, 19 year old uh, kid going to play in probably men's football. But nothing to compare with the with the Premier League, but as also as important as as it is uh, at the moment right now. Coming from Barcelona, like, what was your impressions of arriving in the northwest of England? Because obviously it's very famous for its rain. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. It was tough, especially because I moved in January, so the weather was awful. Um, hard to to get used to it. Uh, obviously, the days were very very short. You just get dark at that. You get dark at four o'clock in in the afternoon. Uh, bad weather. Um, well, now the impressions were like different country. I had to adapt myself, uh, different language, uh, new people. So, no, the the first the first few months were they were tough. They were tough, but um, I was I was lucky enough to 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 have um, obviously Hugo. Um, he was a Spanish as well, so that helped me a lot. And then obviously Blackburn helped me loads to to get used to it. Of course, as well, you mentioned you was a teenager at the time. So did all that help you grow up quickly as well as just toughen up quick quickly? Yeah, I think that made, that made me mature quicker than than most people my age and um, made me the man I am right now. Because obviously there's some values that I would never, I would never had them if if I didn't move to to another country or or especially to the, to this country. Because um, obviously it's when you are 16, moving away from family, friends, on your own. He makes you become a man a bit quicker. So, how did coming to non-league football help you find your feet? I'm sure you was going some places week in week out that you hadn't even heard of before you moved. <laughs> no, obviously, uh, when I decided to go on loan, it was it was the best for my career. I think it was at the stage of the in my career that I needed to play proper football. I don't think on the twenty ones were were helping me at, at all at the moment. I thought on the twenty ones at that moment it was a bit. A bit fake and a bit, let's put it like a bit too easy in my in my in my in my opinion. I wanted to get tested every week, and obviously going to to South Point in Conference Prem at the moment, um, it was the best decision because I knew it was it wasn't just football. It was um, people playing to play to pay their bills, um, training at the university, playing against real men against like real football that I was tested every every single every single week so that was um, at the state of my career at that moment it was the best thing I, I could have done so would you say you got important experiences that you might not have got otherwise yeah yeah I think uh, at that age I think I signed I think the first time was a month and then we we prolonged to to three months and it was the start of September if I'm not wrong I was 18 at the time and when obviously when Blackwood decided to 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 send me on loan, obviously they asked me, "Oh, do you want to go?" And I sp- I had a chat with the with the gaffer and with the goalie coach, and they said it's the best thing you could you could do because that's gonna it's gonna m- improve your loads, and you're gonna get tested every week playing against men, not playing against under twenty ones. That at the time they were like 18, 19, maximum twenty years old uh, at the time, so. It was like proper real football. I think under twenty ones is good when you're coming from the academy 
just that one year and then after that I think the the way is just to go out on loan to play to play football. Did you enjoy being around a club of that size? Because it's a lot more family feel, like non-league, like the familiar faces there every week compared to like the way what would you what would have been like the <laughs> world of like the championship of the Premier League? Yeah, I enjoyed every single minute at Southport. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed every single training session, every single game, uh, going to home games. I thought the fans were incredible since the first day. I, I came supporting me like I was one of their own um, since day one. Same with the players, same with the staff. Um, so yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed every every single minute, every single time. Um, I have no bad words uh, to tell about Southport. I thought because of that loan, that's where I am right now. How much do you know about the club before you joined? Nothing. I'm not gonna lie, nothing. I didn't know where it was. I didn't know what league it was until they told me, obviously, before joining. But I'd never heard of it before. Could have been sent you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was um, it, it was around Liverpool, but I'd, I'd never heard of, 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 the, of the team. Um, obviously, I was very, very impressed with uh, everything that was going on at the time. I've heard from people around the club that one of your most notable, notable games was an FA Cup tie against Derby. So did that occasion give you like this the taste of the big matches and obviously you've had a few you've had a few since. Uh, yeah I thought I think that literally that was my last game of um of of my loan. Um even if we got the draw and we got the replay, I will I couldn't I couldn't play the the replay because literally the day after that was when my loan was finishing. But yeah that was um I think that was the best match I ever I ever had. Uh, in my football career, I thought everybody played really, really well. But um, just losing one nil against Derby in the ninety fourth minute as a penalty when they had twenty five plus shots in the whole game, um, I was very, very involved in 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 every in everywhere. But yeah, that was I think that was a remarkable uh, game to to finish the loan, even if it was a a, a loss, but. Um, it was very, very uh, important for me. Of course, you must have played Derby a few times since. Has it felt sweet when you've beaten them because of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought the first time I played um, after that, I played at, uh, at the Derby, uh, Derby ground. It made me like re relieve the same, like the moments and the, the emotions I had that that day. Um, I think I think it was the third of January, if I'm not wrong, when when we played them for Southport. Uh, so yeah, every time I go there, the memory takes me back to to to, to that game in 2015. So it's nice, it's nice memories to 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 relieve when when you step into a ground or you you're thinking about a club. So um, it's a nice memory, even that that we lost that day, but we gave it our all. Um, it was it was a it was a game that we we had nothing to lose, but we showed what we cap what the team was capable of. Did that game more than any other of your loan spell just make you think, right, I'm ready to now make a jump back to like the like the higher levels? Does it set you up nicely for everything that's followed since in your career? Yeah, I remember after that game, um, the I went back to Blackburn and then the 21s were playing and I wasn't playing because obviously I was um, I just played the like two days ago. And I remember the gaffer, first team gaffer came to the game. And they weren't having a really good game. And he put me as an example, saying, look at this guy, look at David, like he just played one of the best games in, in, in his career for South Boys He's coming back. I take that as a as a role model to 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 carry on playing and giving you all. And when I made my debut against Leeds, he said to me, he said, Listen, you earned this through your loan spell up Southport and Obviously, all the hard work that you put, you have put in this year. So I think that that game in particular made realize the gaffer that I was ready to to make the step to the first team properly, and that's what made me play the last game of that season for uh, for Blackburn and the start the next season as a first choice keeper. Do you look back on your time at Southport fondly? Because I know. I noticed on social media still like some of the club's posts, especially when it's going back to that day at Derby. 
Yeah, of course, of course. There's uh, obviously there's some memories I will never forget. There's uh, there's times that um, it's impossible to 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 forget. And like I said before, that time at Salford being on loan in the lower league and knowing that obviously the bonus is for for a winning. It was important for the lads because they had bills to pay, they have kids, they have another work uh, on the side to to carry on living their lives. That made me realize how lucky I was to to be playing um, at, at as a professional level as and a club as big as as Blackburn. Because obviously, first day I, w- I went to training, I didn't know what to take. I didn't I didn't I didn't bring my towel. I didn't I didn't bring my kit because obviously I was used to to get my kit clean. Get my towels at the at the training ground, and I was like a little bit lost. So that made me realize um, that how lucky I was, and it made me implement my um, values to to think shit is not is not as pretty as 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 it looks on on the outside. So it made me it made me just realize a lot more in, that it's just not it's just not just football. Is more into it. Do you feel like more players, like in the top few leagues, need to see like this more gritty side, or like that? For some people, it is just life, like alongside work. It's not. It's not always both. I think, I, in my opinion, I think young lads coming through, they should see that side, because they they will realize how how lucky they are to. To play football in a in a good club, or how lucky they are to to be where they are. But when you go down and you you experience by yourself, when you have to clean your own washing, you have to bring your own kit, uh, your own boots, gloves, make your own back. And because I was used to, since I went to black uh, to Blackburn, getting everything clean, everything taken. To the uh, to the games, um, I had my own jobs in the in the academy, blah blah blah. But I never used to clean my kit. I never used to take my own boots or gloves. It was also all in the skip and going to the to the to the to the ground or to the other um, training center for the other teams with the with the band. So so yeah, it's just something that I, it makes you mature and it, make, it makes you appreciate things uh, a bit more. So I appreciate I've been appreciating every single stay of my career because of my time at Southport that made me realize and take pressures of things that I I wouldn't have done if if I didn't go. Would you have been at Southport at the same time as Ben Davies, or would did he come? No. To- no, he. I think he came before me, no, or after. I can't remember. I know Jono was there before me as well. Uh, no, I, he wasn't there. Because they could get a nine, nine more players could get a Premier League, a South Foot Premier League. Team. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, like people, like, another big story is like Ian Wright or like Jamie Vardy for like players coming from non-league. I know it's a bit different with you being on loan, but are you like. Is it nice to see stories like that, including yourself, like players working their way up? Is just a nice thing for other people to watch and think, right? I've, I've always got this chance. Yeah, of course, of course. I think that's um, that's uh, that's important, and that's that's what it's football about. Um, obviously, I've got a, a teammate here, Ethan Pinnock. He was playing non-league five or six years ago, and now he's a Premier League centre back and one of the best centre backs I played with. So um, that tells you and tells the kids, the young kids coming through now, no matter how old you are, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, even sixteen, nineteen, everything is possible in football. As soon as you work hard and you, you pursue your dreams, uh, anything can happen. So that's those type of stories that they they're nice to hear. Of course, when you have something um, to relate with them. Would you say you're quite a patient person, like just waiting for your chance? Because obviously at Blackburn, like even when you were back on floor and you still waited for the next season to become a regular number one. So you think it was like working hard and waiting for your chance? Would you say the like just values that you hold? Yeah, I think so. I've, you know what? Since I was young, I, I always like to work hard. If I don't work hard, I don't enjoy football. And I know working hard and giving my all and 
learning and watching clips and all that stuff. I knew my chance would come at some point. And I knew one one time I was going to play in the Premier League, no matter how long it would take me, but I was going to do it. I was going to make it. And there we are now. We, we got promoted last year. And that was one of the aims that I put myself when I came to England. So I'm not moving from here until I play in the Premier League. And all the hard work has paid off, obviously. As a kid, um, moving as a 16-year-old, moving countries, different languages that I didn't know any of English by then. Um, and leaving everything for, for a dream. And obviously, accomplishing that, that, that dream is, is, is something that we never forget. Then obviously after establishing yourself with Brentford, you moved. Maybe it's like this is a step that took you one one step close to your dream. Joining the because both yourself and the club have gone from strength to strength over the last few years. So you must really be enjoying your time there, and like also just happy that you made that move. Yeah, of course. I think um, when I moved to Brentford, uh, it was an opportunity for me to to carry on my career. I felt I was too comfortable at Blackburn after seven and a half years. And I needed to to get a new challenge um, with a team that plays plays up from the back and like my style of play, and I think that's why they 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 wanted me to sign. And obviously the club has been is on a rise. You can see as soon as I, I step the foot in the on the door, you could see that the club is is it wants to move forward. It wants to improve. It wants to to be a a big a big club. And I was very, very impressed uh, when I when I arrived, and and yeah, of course we we've been getting better and better and better, and hopefully this year it'll be even better. From what you've been saying, like it seems like you yourself and the club's values are very, very similar. Because of course, obviously, you was at Southport, a small club, then at Blackburn, but then you made that massive jump. Like even moving to London is a big jump. So like you never want to play the safe option. You always want to just push yourself as far as you can. Yeah, I like to live with no regrets. I like to to make my own decisions, and if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. And if if it goes if it goes well, that's happy days. But I'd rather live off no regrets and trying the stuff than don't try it just in case I'm gonna fail. So that's how it should be. Because if you don't try, you don't learn. If you don't fail, you don't learn. And that's the only way to to success, in my opinion. Of course, you must have a lot of fighting spirit there because you lost one playoff final, but then you bounced back straight away the year after. Did you always have confidence as around your group that you would always come back? That it was never in doubt that, oh, this is our... For some clubs, they'd think, that's our one chance, gone. Or did you always know, we'll be back, then thereabouts, next season? Yeah, I thought that was, that was a hat. Obviously, it was tough to take. Obviously, losing against against Fulham um, a year ago, but we we knew if we did our job, obviously with the help of the of the staff, the gaffer, and obviously all the club, we only had thirteen days off that season. And that, when we came back, we felt like we were coming into a cushion. Like mentally, it was very very tough. To, to let that go, but that's what we had to do to, to move forward. And I think the staff and the club made a, a great job uh, to implement that to the players, because obviously it's hard for the players, but obviously it's hard for the staff as well to get through that. And having the season we had last season, going 21 games unbeaten, uh, getting, getting top of the league and then losing three games in a row and then not seeing that we were getting the results that we deserved and and having another playoffs. And as soon as the playoff came, uh, oh, people always ask, oh, were you, were you, you had fear because you had a playoff last year and uh, and you were like, you were worried that you're going to lose again. And we always said the same. We said, we have a one year more experience than what we had last year. We never had that experience from players. But we, we, this year, we, most of the players have already played in the playoffs. So we knew what to, we had to do. And going to Bournemouth, losing 1-0, it 
playing at home after 10 minutes again, just seeing yourself down 1-0 again. So 2-0 in aggregate and then beating them 3-1 at home. That was the character that we shown the whole the whole season and that we never give up. I was just looking back at your own personal journey, always keep confidence in yourself because like, you can just always think, if you, when I first arrived over here, I was playing, I was playing cold winter's nights at Hague Avenue, but now I'm going to Wembley. So is that just always like confidence, a positive way to look at things? Like there's always one step further you can take. Yeah, I think uh, it's not just that. It's just I think having believing in yourself, believing that you're good enough to 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 play where you are and to go even further. I think uh, think thinking highly about yourself is important because if you don't think highly about yourself, nobody will. And just having that confidence about yourself uh, while you're having a tough moment or or you're having a good moment. Like you're having three, four, five, six, seven good games in a row, but maybe you make a mistake. It doesn't matter. Everybody makes mistakes. And obviously looking looking to play at Wembley is is a dream. It's a kid. It's, you dream that when, when you're a kid to play those type of games. So you have to be confident that that you're good enough and the team is good enough to to, to accomplish the, the 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 dream or the the goal. So you've got to mind you gets the best out of everyone, gets everyone enjoying themselves. So what are you what are your aims in the Premier League? And are you just like excited to get going? Especially when you've got teams like maybe like Leeds from last year. They went up and they just played their football, carried on, didn't let didn't let promotion affect their mindset. So do you think you're gonna be a bit similar to that? Um we to be fair, we, we haven't talked about what the aims are, uh or what we're going to do. We're just going to be ourselves, still playing the, the way we play, still still attack and still taking game by game, training session by training session. And we will see where, where we are at the, end, at the end of May. And obviously, we want to do well. We want to stay up. So that's 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 just the... We're not, we don't go enough to, to get relegated again. We want to, to do the best and just live our... A signal in there, but obviously taking it game by game, and we can wait to start in two weeks' time. We just rolling to go. Come back first game of the season, and then obviously the big games around the season, like going to places like Old Trafford, the Etihad, Anfield. We just be thinking about you, know, especially on Merseyside. We just be thinking about your journeys and the way, how far you've come. Just thinking back, and just you must be so proud of what you've achieved as well. Yeah, I yeah, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud. But I couldn't do it without obviously the people around me, uh, my family, mom, dad, brothers, and my friends, my teammates that that are around. So it's a it's a problem for everybody, uh, especially to play in the Premier League, which that was the aim since I came to England. But yeah, very very proud. And obviously, when it didn't sink in before, but now it's starting to sink in properly. And finally. David Raya, Premier League goalkeeper. You'd be doing all the all the sky graphics, just walking out before the match, the music playing, <laughs> all the full stadiums. How, how good? How good does that sound? <laughs> yeah, and really, really good. But the most important thing is the fans are back. So that's that's one of the important things because obviously we play with fans. That's that's what we play for. Uh, we play for ourselves. Well, the football with our fans is not the same. We have experienced in that in the last. 17 months that we've been playing with our fans, so it's for them. Uh, it's a great, great season to to be in the in the Premier League. Uh, and the first season back, it couldn't be better that the fans are back.